Okay, welcome to part 2 of my Minecraft series in Fantasy Craft. This episode, we're gonna be exploring caves and uh, a bunch of other stuff. But uh, here in the start, I just went mining, to be honest with you guys. Didn't find much, I didn't find a single diamond. I did find some in chests, but other than that, I didn't find any diamonds, which is kinda crazy. Because I went deep in this cave, but I'm not gonna show you that much, because it's kinda boring. It's just me mining coal, to be fair. I did come across a dragon though, and uh, for some reason I thought it would be friendly and it killed me. It happens right here. Uh, I come across this dragon. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought that a dragon would be friendly, uh, but I did. Uh, so right here I go up and then I come to this friggin' dragon. It, it looks pretty cool. I thought it was the ender dragon at first, but no, no, I think it's just, I think it's called a black dragon. And at first it looks friendly, right? Because it's not attacking me or anything. But then as soon as I get close to it, it just it just obliterates my armor and everything. And yeah, I died. Um, yeah, there's not much else that I explored in the caves. That was the most interesting I found in the caves was a dragon that just instantly obliterated me. That was about it. And then right here, I came across my first non-village uh, structure, which happened to be a mushroom house with mushroom people. I thought it was pretty. Um, cool. I actually got some decent loot from it. It's also rigged with traps and blocks, which if you step on, poisons you, which I find quite fascinating. It was annoying looting this place, because all well, the chests were right at the top, and uh, going at the top just poisons you and stuff. It's really strange. However, this place did have quite a bit of uh, diamonds and cool weapons, like this one right here. Had something called gravity, which apparently pulls your enemies to you and then launches them away. I tested it out on some mobs and I have to say I'm disappointed because it did not um, do anything. Also, you can talk to the mushroom people for some reason. I'm assuming maybe I need to upgrade my trade uh, level, which that's another thing I found in this episode is you can upgrade certain skill sets, which I, I'll put a, a screenshot of that up on the screen. Um, I have upgraded it quite a bit because later in the video you'll see I come across a dungeon which the XP you get in that place is insane. So I looted the, the mushroom house thingy, which by the way these things are pretty common, I found at least four of them. I came across this uh, sky temple which was pretty cool, but there was nothing up there if I'm being honest with you. I also came across a beekeeper thingy just before I went to the sky village. Well, not the Sky Village, it was a single house with one villager, which I couldn't even trade with at the time because I didn't upgrade my trading level. So I basically went up there for absolutely nothing. Okay, now I did count some of the honey place because there was absolutely just nothing and there was just honey. Right here I pulled up to the Sky Village, which I then I eyed and found another huge village, which you can see there in the corner. Uh, on the left there, which actually is not a village, it is a um, pillager outpost, like a really really big one. I'm also gonna skip past the sky island because there's just nothing except this flower which is pretty cool. The chest mainly had amethyst, which, uh, amethyst, sorry not amethyst, amethyst, which I gotta just mine here or in the cave. So yeah, I was kinda wasted my time to go up here. Now when I did finally go down the giant island, I genuinely thought that uh, the place on my left was a giant village, but I couldn't be more wrong because as soon as I arrived, I started getting bombarded by uh, pillagers, which uh, as a whole, this entire place didn't have much except of course farming pillagers, which is pretty cool. And also, it is actually a village. You see those houses right there? I should zoom on it in the video. That is a village. However, everything else below it is a proper Pillager outpost, which uh, I'm gonna speed it up because exploring takes a long. Like what I'm looking at right now is a 16-minute recording of me just exploring this place. I don't even find that much loot. However, when I did finally come to the the main main building, which uh, you'll see here in a moment after I explore all these small buildings, which I found a charm that gives you extra life and a bunch of other things. I did get quite a lot of advancements from uh, exploring this place, as well as magic, which I'm still freaking learning how to use after these things. I also got a horn, which as you can see, <laughs> I was having a blast with it. 
I freed up all the iron golems, I was thinking they'd help me, but they didn't really do much. Um, they kind of just started walking around, which was weird. But I finally did arrive to the main building over here, which I was excited for. But this is where I got some really good loot. I can actually say that there was some decent loot in this building. There's also a really weird monster sound playing all the time, which I'm, I'm just gonna spoil it for you guys. There was no monster. It was a disappointing spider spawner underneath the house, which uh, I'm pretty sure it's built in, in the place. It was disappointing. I did find a lot of diamonds and emeralds in this place, which was pretty cool though. I also have to say that um, finding where the monster spawner was was quite a task because the sound wasn't exactly clear. I also thought that maybe somewhere in the house would lead just straight to the uh, spawner or the monster or whatever it was, but no, 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 no. I literally had to go in and dig around and find where it was. But then I did find that there is an area that leads to it, I just couldn't find where it was. So that's how I ended up leaving this place after finding the spawner. So here after hearing I did dig here and I found it, there was just a bunch of spiders in here. Which they were easy to kill because they couldn't fit through the, the one by one. Which I don't know, that was a thing for spiders, I thought they'd all be able to just fit through it. So yeah, that was the Pillager Outpost, which I kind of expected it to be a bit more difficult. Uh, maybe I'm just a bit too good at the game. <laughs> that's, that's a joke, I'm not that good. Also, I found out what that sound means when it goes whoa, whoa, whoa. It's uh, for this here, which is the upgrade system I was talking about. Okay, so like the next day, I decided that I'm gonna ex just explore and uh, Right here I came across something quite interesting. At first I thought that it was an exposed stronghold that's just almost at surface level, which in theory sounds stupid. But then I, I went inside and uh, it is a, a village or a prison. I, I couldn't tell because I mean, they're sleeping in jail cells but they're trading so I I was very confused. And I gotta say, these these uh, structures are all really, really beautiful. Like on the inside, outside. Well, this one on the outside didn't look much. This one had bubble elevators. It also had a iron column that was named, so I assume it probably had way more health, which as you can see on top left, it does. A normal iron golem has 100, and this one had 500. I thought this bubble elevator would take me somewhere, but it just takes me to the surface. There wasn't too much in this village, I couldn't even trade with anyone because I didn't upgrade my trading level yet. So I'm gonna speed this up as well. I'm just gonna speed up whatever isn't really important at the moment. Because I mean, there's no point in wasting you guys time. I did end up grabbing all the books because I needed it for my enchantment table back home, which I have been using. If you can see in the bottom, my, uh, my pickaxes and stuff have been uh, enchanted. They didn't get too good enchants, I think it's got like Fortune 1, which is not the worst enchant, but I feel like I could have gotten something way better. Also, at the end of this video, I think I'm gonna rate all the structures I came by, if I uh, if I remember to, because I'm not editing this all in one day, because I'm currently sick, but uh, I, I probably remember. I gotta say, this uh, village was pretty cool, it was unique, I mean, I've never seen a village in a dungeon, so I, I really enjoyed exploring it. I mainly found these little libraries which gave me books and enchanted books. I had no idea what to do with these uh, these books. I think they're just stories or something. I will come back to them, however. They were giving me a lot of gold, so I just grabbed all of them back over and over and over. Uh, I don't know if these golds are giving me any uh, um, like XP or anything, but it was it was just worth doing it in case, you know. Uh, I also came across a loom which I didn't take because I'm not, I'm not much of a banner artist. Anyway, I did finally leave because there wasn't much in there yet because obviously I could not trade and uh, I was back on the road again. Then I came across another mushroom house which didn't have much again. But then, uh, straight after the mushroom house I came across this really cool looking village which is my third village now. This one here had like this uh, graveyard, I would say, with a bunch of chests and also a broken nether portal, which I ended up taking all the, not all, but I took uh, 
the obsidian enough for both an enchantment table and a nether portal because I do want to see what the nether is like maybe in the next episode or definitely one of the future episodes but uh, uh, definitely looking forward to the nether because the overworld is really really beautiful in, in this uh, fantasy craft so the, the ruins here didn't have much to offer me besides the obsidian and a few uh, what do you call it gear tools whatever you want to call it and that was about it also some gold and a few diamonds and emeralds which I, I will take I don't have that much diamonds I have I have two sacks of emeralds I'm pretty sure by now but yeah I, I really do like this ruins thing and I hope I come across it again oh yeah uh, another thing I came across in this uh, village is uh, a, a dirt igloo I'm not even kidding yeah I would have never noticed it if I didn't see the window while killing those uh, uh, whatever you call it I did check to see if there was a secret and there was and it's just a typical zombie and uh, villager story in the igloo uh, it's pretty cool to see that there's a dirt one there wasn't much in this chest besides golden apple and ice shards which I'm assuming, assuming you can use something else now there is a copper ring here as well but I do have a gold one so I left it but I'm assuming there's probably something I can use to craft with uh, the copper uh, and something really cool I wanted to show you what I was exploring as I came across this fire claymore I also discovered that my sword can do this whirlwind thing if I right click like just watch this okay. <laughs> it just launches you across the map doing insane amount of damage uh, I didn't know what this fire claymore thing was but it had a lot of health it was also regenerative but I did end up killing it and then it uh, it dropped uh, a weird key thingy I think a key thingy no no it, it dropped a pickaxe so yeah so it's, it was something else that dropped the key which I think is later on in this video but uh, this time the pickaxe was pretty cool with the efficiency I did take it because why wouldn't I I did end up going back to my house and get my inventory and then I decided to take a boat start exploring the ocean which I came across this um, first of all there's a bunch of these coral chests all over also I muted the sound because I'm listening to copyright music because here I was just vibing to um, music on Spotify so <laughs> sorry about that I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I will mute it, I'll make it softer um, I did come across a shipwreck and a ship which in the ship is actually a Pillager's ship, which these Pillager structures are so much better than like the woodland mansion and the outpost, I can't even lie. It is amazing. Uh, one thing to note, around this ship there's a lot of drowned spawners, there's even one on like the underneath of the sh uh, literally underneath the ship, it's built into it. Um, now I didn't end up going on the ship because why wouldn't I, and I gotta say it is amazing. Now to be honest, there wasn't much loot on the ship it was more so just TNT hay and a bunch of mobs but I'm fine with that I did collect all the TNT and stuff um, they, like I said there wasn't much to really uh, loot on the ship but it's still a really cool structure I also noticed that when I was grabbing the TNT it you you are able to um, it, like blow it up from the outside if you shoot it with an arrow because it is on a target block which if you shoot a target block it gives a redstone reaction also uh, the boss fight was slightly disappointing it was just an uh, invisible villager which you can see right here it, he wasn't too hard but uh, he did end up dropping a diamond axe which I'm assuming is common with uh, uh, boss fights and here I came across this little ice tower and although it looks clean it is ass Loot in this place was terrible, even though I had this little magic book that allows you to teleport like short distances. The book made it 60 times easier. Uh, it, the loot was not worth it. I mean, yeah, the tower looked cool and it's a pretty cool structure, but looting it was just... It wasn't anything special. It was mid, mid. I, it looks cool, I'll give it that. It is probably one of the coolest looking structures I've come across so far. Uh, also, you can place things in ice, which is pissing me off because my bread and stuff were being placed in the ice. But uh, yeah, this tower didn't have much aside from the coolness factor. Other than that, it was it was terrible.
Um, right off, I left the tower, I came across the snow village, which I gotta say, the snow village itself wasn't anything special, it's just a village, it looked pretty cool, I did like how it looked, the loot was pretty terrible, so I didn't bother looting any other chest, because when you open the first chest, you more or less know how every other chest is gonna be, obviously you still have chances of finding emerald, and, but I'm a lazy person, so I decided to leave it, and then when I was leaving, using the which here in my hand I got the scorpion uh, scorpion hook which I was confused on here was where I found the dungeon and I absolutely love this place this is one of my favorite places because it gave me a crap ton of XP I have nothing to really complain about the dungeon except that it's only zombies it doesn't spawn anything else actually no it does spawn these like weird skeletons with a sword which you'll see uh, I'll come across in a bit it is also huge, this place was huge and I feel like I could have, this could have been maybe just a small one. There's, oh my god, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> like I was saying, there is a lot of uh, spawners around, which I made the mistake of destroying a bunch of them. I realized that if I save them, uh, then it, it, it will spawn more and I can just have infinite XP. Also, here you can see I used the scorpion hook, which at first I didn't know what it was, and then I realized it it's literally scorpion's hook. So, whereas the other book was letting me uh, teleport all over, this one was just pulling the mobs right into me. Which is not very useful in a game where you're gonna be not wanting to have mobs close to you, because they're gonna do a hell of a lot of damage. But at least I can say that in this place I got a, a lot of XP and a lot of gear and uh, cool items and whatnot. It was pretty cool uh, place. I, I like this dungeon and um, definitely one of the coolest structures. Now I did spend like an hour in there just looting and killing zombies over and over but I did finally leave. Then I came across this which is a structure I found close to my house but I didn't show because I want to show it in another video. But here, the temptation just got me and I, I decided to go in here and just loot this place. I didn't loot it fully because I said I should save it for another video. So I'm not going to show you the little bit I looted. However, I'm going to show you these mobs I killed. And just to give you a taste of what I saw when I went through the portal, I'm going to show you the second I go in the portal and uh, nothing more. This is all you're going to get. And got and now here towards the end of my journey, I found a village not too far away from that uh, dungeon. Uh, as in, not the dungeon, the portal room. Which I'm glad I found because uh, if I didn't, I was going to have to travel like a lot, a lot of blocks away. I also found this weird dude that I had to observe, so I just pushed him in a hole and observed him so he would stop moving. Because it was frustrating having him move the whole time. And so yeah, I did uh, finally come across... Um, a waypoint which is lovely because now I don't have to travel here th anytime I can just teleport so I named the waypoint after activating it and then I decided to go home and have my inventory and just get off the game because I was tired at this point I think I was recording this at like two o'clock in the morning uh, and the waypoints just make things so much better and yeah that was the end of this first journey I uh, gotta say it was pretty successful I did enjoy uh, going through all these locations and there's probably way more to explore so I hope to see you guys in the next video where we go through the nether maybe peace